here's the big one. This is a big nasty one because look at all this. Connective tissue is made into four different chunks like we mentioned earlier. Connective tissue proper, cartilage, bone, and blood. Connective tissue proper is broken into two categories, loose connective, dense connective. Loose connective is broken into three categories, ad areolar, adipose, and reticular. Dense connective, dense, regular, dense, irregular, and elastic. Cartilage, hyaline, elastic, and fiber cartilage. Bone and blood, thankfully, not so much. So we're going to start out with the first one, which is connective tissue proper. There's two main types, like you can see from the little diagram right here. There's loose connective tissue, which includes areolar, adipose, reticular, and dense connective tissue, which includes different dense regular, dense, irregular, and elastic. Here we go. Buckle your seat belts. It'll be a fun ride. Okay. So for each page, I'm putting the main category, you know, subcategory, sub subcategory under it. So under connective tissue proper, under the category of loose connective tissue, we have what's called areolar connective tissue. Areolar's job is to support and bind tissues. It holds on to body fluids, defends against infection, stores nutrients. The cells that we find in, in areolar tissue would be fibroblasts. So let's take a look at the picture, see what we can find. So each of these cells is a fibroblast in there. And you can see that it's surrounded by elastic fibers, which are the thin ones, collagen fibers, which are a little bit thicker. So it kind of looks like um, a hairball. That's kind of how I think of areolar tissue. It looks like a big old hairball with strings and stuff. Kind of like when you looked under the microscope for the first time and you saw all these random hairs, that's what it looks like. Okay, the second type of loose connective tissue is adipose. I love adipose tissue because it just, I love the way it looks under the microscope. Adipose, otherwise known as fat, as you guys know, its job is to store nutrients. It is very vascularized. It has lots of blood vessels in there. Cells are called apidocytes, so that apido has to do with adipose and then the site means cell. There's two different types of uh, fat that you have, brown fat and white fat. Brown fat is what generates heat. You usually only have it when you're born. When you're first born, you um, have brown heat, and that's what helps to maintain your body temperature for the first couple of weeks of life. Without it, you would get too cold and die. And then after we work through our brown fat, and once we have the ability to store extra nutrients on us as regular fat, well, then it turns into what we call white fat, which is a misnomer because if you were to cut open someone and look inside, it ain't white. It's yellow. It's ugly and gross and nasty looking. But under the microscope, it's cool looking because, look, it looks like a whole bunch of bubbles all stuck together. What we're looking at is just a whole bunch of big fat cells that are all stuck together. And if you take a cross section through them, you are looking at the cell membranes of each individual little circle. And so... So, yeah, right there, cell membrane. These are the nuclei that are just kind of squished in there. Hardly any cytoplasm. It's just pretty much all vacuole. So this big thing right there, each of these old bubbles, those are vacuoles that are completely filled with fat. We all have the same number of fat cells our whole entire life. It's what we do with them, which is what makes them different. So we can always make more cells, um, but you can't reduce the number of cells. You can only reduce the size of the cell. Okay, the third type of loose connective is called reticular. Its main job is support, and its cells are reticular cells. And so if we look in here, we got a lot of little fibers kind of all floating around. These little round guys, those are your reticular cells. And then we have reticular fibers that are just kind of interspersed throughout. Now this looks different than areolar because areolar it has much more stuff. You know, big lines of stuff in there. This doesn't. This one is very much packed full of cells with little stuff. So, oh, I can't get my pen the right size. Come on now. There we go. Well, whatever. So as you can see, not as much fibers as the other one. More cells. More nuclei. Okay, next one. So now we're in the second category of connective tissue proper, which is dense connective. And under there, remember, there's three categories as well. First one being dense regular. Dense regular is mostly fibrous. This to me looks like beef jerky. That's how I remember this one. It is very resistant to tension. So this is what forms your tendons and ligaments. Very hard to rip, unless you're a football player, then you're really good at ripping your ACLs and PCLs, or even your MCL if you're really talented. But all, the way that they're all lined up with each other, 
um, that it just makes them super duper strong. This is like the part of the meat where you're like chewing and chewing and chewing and it just doesn't happen. That's this stuff. So you can see that all the collagen fibers are all kind of lined up with each other. All these, uh, you can see the flattened nuclei inside. Um, so this is dense, regular, very densely packed together, regularly spread out. Looks like beef jerky. Okay, the next one is dense irregular. So we're still under the category of connective tissue proper, under dense connective, dense irregular. Now I like this one because it kind of looks like um, if you were to put water coloring or something in water and then take a toothpick and just kind of smear it all around, it looks like the top of the ocean to me. How you remember it's totally up to you. But it's irregularly arranged, whereas the other ones were nice and even. Uh, thicker fibers in the previous one. They're arranged all over the place. This also makes your skin and covers up some of your organs. So this is what we find under our epidermis in there. So because it's irregular, you have the ability to um, kind of squish it and um, extend it as well. And then the last kind of dense connective we have is elastic, found in very stretchy areas like your skin. Um, there are some people I can't remember the name of the condition, but they have super stretchy skin where like this guy can take his lower lip and lift it up to his forehead. That's how stretchy his skin is. And it's because he's got a problem with these elastic fibers right here. Normal people's elastic fibers do allow you to stretch your skin to a certain extent, but then they should snap back. The older you get, as you lose your elastic fibers, these little squiggly lines in here, which looks like a worm race to me, um, you, they lose their elasticity and so your skin becomes very brittle. We also find the stuff in lungs, blood vessel walls, because they need to constantly expand and contract it for every heartbeat that goes through. Okay, the next one, so now we're in cartilage, which is the second of the four types of connective tissue. Cartilage characteristics are they're made for tension and compression, so they're able to withstand ridiculous forces. There's no nerves or blood vessels within cartilage, which is why, you know, when you're playing with your ear, you can feel it, but that's because of the skin. If you were to cut the cartilage, it doesn't hurt. It's mostly water, which is, gives it that uh, cushiony appearance. There's two types of cells in it. We have chondroblasts, which are the, uh, the cartilage forming cells, chondro, cartilage, blast forming. And then we have chondrocytes, which are the mature cells. So here's the three types of cartilage we have. We have called hyaline cartilage right here, elastic cartilage right here, and fiber cartilage right here. So let's take a look at those. Okay, the first one, hyaline cartilage. I like the way these guys look, they're kind of cute. Um, hyaline cartilage is smooth and glossy. You'll see this when we take the bones out of the cat, you're going to see that the ends of the bones where they connect with other bones is almost opalescent. It's very pretty, very shiny. Uh, it helps to cover the long bones. It's found in your nose, this kind of cartilage, your ribs, which allow them to expand, your sternum, your trachea, which is what makes it bumpy, and epiphyseal plates, which we talked about the other day with um, the cats and the bones. Now how I look for these is I look for these, look, gosh dang it, come on, pen, work for me. Now it's gonna be too thin, yeah, I thought so. What I do is I look for these little bubbles and inside of it, it looks like fried eggs. So you have a bubble and then you have an egg with a nucleus or the yolk inside. That's how you can find hyaline cartilage. Sometimes there's even two eggs in the same bubble like those, but that's the easiest way to look for it. Look for fried eggs. Okay, the next one is elastic cartilage. Uh, this is very flexible, only found two places, your external ear and your epiglottis, uh, which is down inside of there, and it helps to cover up um, your trachea when you swallow food so you don't choke on your food. Now this one, because it is very thin, you'll notice that I've got the fried egg thing going on as well, but notice how they're all bunched together in this uh, packed tight area. Most of the time that's how it's going to look. So whereas the other one, Notice had all this extra fluff space around it. Not these guys, totally tightly packed together. Looks like styrofoam. Like when you rip styrofoam apart, that's what it looks like to me. All right, and then we have fibrocartilage, which has a lot of fibrous material in it, like this stuff here, and squished lines of nuclei. So this is found where hyaline cartilage connects to ligaments and tendons. So it's at the attachment of bones and muscles. Usually seen in intervertebral discs, so you have a bone and a squishy disc and a bone and a squishy disc. So the squishy disc would have this type of cartilage in it, fibro. Toughest out of all of them because look at all the pain and pressure it has to withstand every day. So this one, look for what looks like beef jerky, 
but with big long rows of nuclei inside. Okay, third type of connective tissue, bone, otherwise known as osseous tissue. Bone supports, we know that, protects. This one you may not know, stores fat. Your bone can actually store fat inside. Your bone also makes blood cells for you. It's very similar to cartilage, but it has inorganic calcium salts, which solidify and make your bones hard. They are made by osteoblast. So blast means to make, osteo means bone. Osteocytes, mature bone cells, they live in what are called lacunae, or lacuna, if you're talking about one of them. If you're talking about more than one, you add the E on the end, becomes lacunae. These are little holes that are in the bone matrix, and inside you will see the bone cell. So let's see what that looks like. So here is, uh, okay, this is a real picture. This is just a diagram. And so what you see is that this big circle, it's kind of like rings in a tree. And so the older you are, the more rings you have. Okay, each of these little things right here, that's a hole, the lacuna, where the osteocytes are found. So each of those are bone cells. In the middle, we have this big hole called the Haversian Canal. We'll learn about that more later. It holds your arteries, veins, capillaries, nerves, and stuff like that. So um, osteocyte is the cell that lives in the lacuna, which is the hole inside of bone. So vessels in here, so bone cell, bone cell, bone cell, living in little homes called lacu uh, lacunae. Okay, and the last one, blood, doesn't give any support, doesn't connect anything, but it does transport definitely. And because it's made from mesenchyme, that means it's under the connective tissue umbrella. The cells are made out of RBCs, or red blood cells, and a matrix of plasma. So all this stuff around here, that's the matrix. That's all plasma. And then here's the cells. We've got red blood cells that look like Cheerios. We've got white blood cells. Uh, there's five different types of white blood cells. We'll talk about those later. The fibers, as you can see, there's no lines of fibers like in the other ones. They are there, you just can't see them. They're soluble until you hurt yourself. And then all of a sudden, they reappear, and then that's what clots your blood together and clots everything together to make a scab. Blood's job, transport nutrients, waste, gases, and any other material it can think of. All right, that's it. So not as long as I thought, only 12 minutes. I know I've definitely talked longer than that, but um, we're gonna do some lab work to help you identify the slides of the different types of connective tissue so that way you can look at a picture and automatically know what kind that is. All right, let's talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.